Hi, I'm Christian Drake, macro and housing analyst here at Hedgeye. Uh, what I wanted to discuss today was GDP accounting in the flow of activity through the NIPA accounts, which are the national income and product accounts uh, used by the BEA for national accounting purposes. Um, understanding the basic accounting setup um, in GDP accounting does a couple things. First, it allows you to understand what's going on when you see the headline releases. And second, uh, it's the basis for understanding the flow of assets between countries, why currencies do what they do, and why central banks, for the most part, do what they do, both from a policy and an intervention perspective. Um, when we get into the charts here, you know, conventionally we talk about GDP, that's the headline release, that's what people talk about. Um, but what we're primarily concerned with here uh, is national income. Um, you'll see how, the, how we flow down from expenditure that through GDP down to national income, and particularly as households and consumers, um, it's income that's uh, what we're concerned with that defines your capacity either to consume or to invest. Um, so if we, we take a look at our, at our first chart here, um, in a simple closed economy uh, with no trade, so we have no trade, no, no access to outside or external resources, uh, you can buy what you produce, and the only income you make is from selling what you produce. Um, so as you can see here in, in, in the circular flow, uh, in other words, expenditure equals production equals income in our simple closed economy. So um, that closed economy flow is, is, is our starting point to understand the broader interactions uh, in an open economy. And uh, this here represents the flow of goods, services, and income uh, within a country's borders domestically. Uh, it gets decidedly more complicated when our home economy can interact with, with the outside world. Uh, if we take a look at our, at our next slide here, here um, the purple still represents the flow of activity within a nation's borders. Um, so that's the same thing we looked at on the previous slide. And the green arrows on the right represent cross-border activity as our home economy engages in transactions with the rest of the world. Um, I know it looks daunting and, and kind of complicated, but it's, it's actually relatively straightforward and, and pretty commonsensical once you work through it uh, a few times, which, which we'll do here. Um, and I'd like you to, for, for now, um, ignore a lot of what's happening in the middle. It's probably going to convolute your understanding. So just, just think about it um, as we talk through it in terms of what's happening in purple um, on the left and then the broader buckets um, on the far right-hand side in, in green, which I've highlighted in, in yellow there. So our starting point is, again, uh, gross national expenditure, uh, and we'll work our way down to GNDI, that's gross national disposable income, which represents aggregate net income, which in turn, um, as we did discuss before, uh, becomes the, what the country in aggregate can use for expenditures um, or towards investment. Um, so we're starting at, at gross national expenditure, GNE there at the top of the flow chart. Um, now in our open economy, uh, you can choose to spend on domestically produced goods and services, or you can import those goods and services from abroad. Um, and other countries have that same choice. So we start with GNE there. Um, we add in net exports, so that's foreign demand for domestically produced goods. Um, and then we add in imports. Um, which is the part of GNE or the part of C plus I plus G, um, which represents um, consumption, investment, and government spending. Um, we add in the part of GNE, which is not used to purchase domestically produced goods. So as you can see on, in the equation there on the right-hand side, um, GNE plus the trade balance, which represents uh, net exports, um, what we just talked through, uh, gives us gross domestic product, or GDP. Um, now, there are some additional sources of, of potential income that get us down to national disposable income. Uh, the first is NFIA, which stands for Net Factor Income from Abroad. Uh, in technical speak, this represents uh, factor service payments. Um, economists call things like capital and labor factors, which can kind of convolute the messaging. But NFIA, um, Net Factor Income from Abroad, is a relatively straightforward concept. Uh, the canonical example um, is, is this. Um, suppose you have a Japanese 
company, a Japanese-owned automaker in the U.S. The income that flows to them is not part of our domestic income that actually flows back to Japan. But similarly, we have um, factories and assets operating abroad where the income from, um, from those assets flows back here domestically. So what you do is you take the net of those two numbers, which um, economists term net factor income, um, and that gets you uh, your GNI, so gross national income. Um, they're the third step on, on the flow diagram. Um, now one more step to, to take us down to, to uh, gross national disposable income is uh, a term called NUT, so that's net unilateral transfers. It's not a big uh, number uh, for, for a country, or for most large uh, developed economies like the US. Um, it is for some developed market um, countries or emerging or frontier economies. Um, what that represents basically is um, net transfer. So it's, it's, it's fairly self-descriptive. Um, if you're given gifts, you're given foreign aid, people are um, working here and remitting payments back, uh, back to the home country. Um, so that we, so people, people working here domestically, if we give another country foreign aid, or people working here and they, they remit um, earnings back to the home country, those flow out. Um, on the other side of it, if we're receiving gifts or, fact, or um, net transfers from somewhere else, uh, people um, importing income back or, or sending back gifts, um, that's an import. Um, you take the net of those two numbers and you arrive at gross national disposable income. Um, so if we work, work back through, I guess to, to summarize, um, we start with gross national expenditure, that's G&E. We add in the trade balance, um, exports minus imports, that gets us to GDP. Um, from GDP, we add in net factor income from abroad. That gets us our gross national income. And then if we add in net unilateral transfers, uh, that gets us to gross national disposable income. Just to kind of wrap this up a little bit further, now when you have a, our closed economy, um, you can't consume more than you produce. Um, that's a, a primary constraint. Uh, when you have an open economy, you can consume more than you produce. Um, so if, if you import more than you export, um, your spending is more than your income, um, you have to pay for that somehow. Um, so when we look at, uh, back at this, uh, the flow diagram here, um, in green, uh, the current account, so you, we, we talked about the trade balance, we talked about NFIA, we talked about net unilateral transfers. Collectively, that's termed the current account. That um, has to balance with what is termed the capital account, which you'll see there at the bottom. So that's the financial account and the capital account. Um, so if you're spending more than, more than you're, uh, you're producing or more than your income, uh, that occurs because people are lending you money and that's what the capital uh, account represents. Um, so that can be a flow of assets, either you're dis-saving, um, people are, are purchasing corporate debt, they're purchasing uh, US treasuries, they're purchasing equity um, in, in US corporations. Um, so that represents a flow of income um, to, to domestic entities, which can then in turn be used uh, to, for expenditure or investment. So that kind of completes our flow. So you start with gross national expenditure, um, you add in the trade balance, you add in um, net factor income from abroad, you add in net unilateral transfers, um, and if you're consuming more than you're, than you're producing or more than, um, more than your income, that's balanced by, um, by the capital account, which represents the flow of the net flow of assets um, into the country and takes you back around to what you have um, in terms of capa capacity to, to spend there at the top with uh, GNE, gross national income. Um, that doesn't get into the, the full kind of granular idios idiosyncrasies of it all. Um, I hope uh, it answered more questions than, than it generated. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to send them into uh, info at hedgeye.com. Uh, we'll be happy to answer those. Thanks.